What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to choose the right camera gear for sports photography. So first off, I'm going to talk about the camera. So first off, you want to choose a camera with a high FPS, high frame rate per second. So this is super important and right now I'm filming on the Canon R5 and my old camera is a Canon 70D and that switch is huge. So the R5 is a more professional camera and shoots around 20 frames a second in certain like the high continuous plus mode where uh, my 70D would shoot around seven or even like five to seven, which is really hard to do when you're shooting really fast paced sports like basketball, track, baseball, anything like that makes it 10 times harder. So you really wanna, that's like the most important thing is focus on high frame rate, uh, which is huge, but also the camera's gonna cost quite a bit more. So like I started off with the 70D and I used that for five years and that has worked me very well. And I only recently made this upgrade because I got a job with my college and I've been making money doing prints and stuff like that. So you really don't need the upgrade to a really nice camera unless you're starting to make money with it because it doesn't make sense to invest in something like the R5, which is a big investment for new lenses, new equipment, everything like that. It doesn't make sense to make that investment unless you're making money from that too. And I, I started out doing this with a very bad camera, worse camera than that, a Canon 50D. So I mean, you can start off with whatever camera and just learn the basics and then move on to a more expensive camera, but frames per second is really important. Uh, the second thing is good autofocus. So right now I have like eye tracking on, so whenever I move, it tracks my eyes and I can actually see it from the screen, like it tracking my eyes. And I do this for surf photography, sports photography, and all that stuff when you have portraits, basically. Anything with portraits, you want eye tracking or, it's kind of the new technology, but it's huge because everything that you do is focused right here, where instead of my arm sticking out, it's not focused on my arm. Where like, maybe if I block the camera or something, it does, but right when it goes to my eye, it goes back, zoom right here. So it's huge when you're doing sports, you zoom in real quick and the ball's flying at them, but their face is right here. It's always going to be focused right there, which is huge because for sports, always want to see the emotion, always want the eyes to be in focus. Second thing is lenses. So lenses are huge. So right now I'm using a wide angle lens because I'm in my dorm and I don't have a lot of space to record. So like you can see right here how wide this lens is because I'm just in this corner right here and it's a really wide lens just so I can get everything and it looks like a good frame. But if I'm shooting baseball or anything like that, you really want a telephoto lens, which is a longer lens. And I'll show you right here. So this is my, right here. This is my lens that I use for basically all my sports outside. So in a gym, I use the 24 to 70 f2.8, but right here, the one to 400, I use for track, baseball, football, soccer, all that stuff. When you're really shooting across a field, you need something like this. And I have an adapter on it for the RF because these lenses are really expensive. So that's the second thing is these lenses are really expensive. So get something like this. This is, I don't know, probably a 10 year old lens that I got from my dad. And it's a F4.5 to 5.6 L series. Uh, but this is the first generation and it's a, uh, I had to use an adapter for it. So, I mean, you guys don't have to buy the newest RF lenses if you have an RF camera because I mean these lenses can go up to I don't even know like 10 grand for some of the new crazy ones so you definitely don't need anything crazy but you do need something that'll get you the length if you're shooting far away you cannot do that with a 50 mil or 24 to 70 it just won't work and I've even used like this for baseball and how to use the crop sensor on my camera since it's a full frame and that still like barely just got as far if I'm shooting across the field with a uh, full frame like it's still not a ton. So I mean, you really need a telephoto lens that's really good. So I think a 70 to 200 is also great. And if you get an f2.8, you can use that indoors as well for like volleyball, basketball, stuff like that, which is also a great option. But you also have to think about aperture as well when you're shooting indoors. So right here, this is f4.5 uh, to 5.6, which works well if it's sunny outside for baseball and stuff. but no way can I use this indoor for volleyball or basketball. And even if it's dark, I'm, I can't even use this thing, sunset really, for uh, 
anything outside just because it gets way too dark then the ISO goes way too high and then it gets pretty grainy where like the camera I'm on right now is f2.8 so if I'm indoors it works out a lot better or I even have a 50 mil f1.8 which is a super cheap lens like 150 bucks which I used I used all season last season for basketball uh, volleyball all the indoor sports and that it is hard because it wasn't a zoom but I mean it worked out well so I mean if you guys don't have a lot of money there are choices like I'm a college student so I'm not gonna be spending like I'm not gonna go buy another one of these or a 70 to 200 RF lens because it's like three grand for that where this one works just fine and then this one indoors so you guys don't need to have that unless you're trying to go like professional in it and then then you really have to spend the big money to get to really sharp photos and do stuff like that and Last thing I wanted to say is accessories. So like a monopod or something like that. So I use a monopod for, I use it for doing a lot of video and it just makes it easier. So if I'm sitting down in like a little chair doing f soccer for a whole game, those games are long. So you really want a monopod to just stabilize it and you can just hold it and you don't need to just hold the camera for a couple hours. So that's definitely a big thing. A nice backpack when you're doing stuff like that to hold everything, to make sure you have all your gear and yeah, that's basically it. So just a quick video about how to choose the right camera gear that I kind of wish that I knew before. But kind of the big takeaway is you don't need the nicest gear. Get what you need. Use gear is always the move. Uh, make sure it works well. They'll always check it before you buy it. And also adapters if you have the RF stuff. Uh, adapters are huge. And I, I think you need to use adapters for like different brands and stuff like Sony and stuff if you need to. Which I'm not sure how well that works, but it's better than paying a couple thousand dollars for a new lens. So always try stuff like that. Uh, yeah, have fun with it. Good luck to you guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed, so hit it. it takes a second. Watch more videos like this. And hit the like button. Helps me out a ton. And comment what you guys want to see next. See you next video.